Over the last 10 years, the Uganda government has been working with oil exploration companies to look for oil in western Uganda, particularly around Lake Albert. One of the key places where they've found a large amount of oil, possibly two to three billion barrels of oil, is under the Murchison Falls National Park. The Murchison Falls National Park is an important biodiversity conservation area, Uganda's biggest park, and used to contain Uganda's largest population of elephants, up to 14,000 individuals. Consequently, environmentalists are quite concerned about the exploration of oil and want to make sure that they uh, can minimize the impacts and that the oil companies do as much as possible to reduce the impacts to a minimum and then try to offset those impacts by uh, supporting conservation activities. One of the key creatures that's likely to be affected by oil is the elephant. The elephant feels through the earth, it can detect uh, infrasonic sound. So any uh, mechanical noises or subsonic noises can be heard and picked up by the elephants. The Wildlife Conservation Society has been working in Murchison Falls National Park to start looking at the impacts of the oil exploration activities on this species. One of the things we found is that the oil drilling can scare elephants up to one kilometer from the drill pads. Although for one drill pad that may not be a significant impact, when they're planning for 25 to 30 wells, the impacts will be much greater. One of the recent activities by the oil companies is a detailed 3D seismic survey across much of the western part of the park, using either vibrosis machines which thump the earth or where the vegetation is too dense, setting off explosions underground. As a result, we believe that these uh, noises that are going on will have a significant impact on the elephants. The oil company Total has funded the Wildlife Conservation Society to radio collar elephants in the park to be able to see how they're moving in relation to the seismic machines. So we'll just find one of the lower holes, yeah. one especially, yeah, one. number one, and then take the wire through and try to drive one of the ends, this other sort of free end, uh, through the elephant first, then attach the, the collar because if you don't... So to go about the collaring exercise, we needed a plane, a helicopter, and a team of people on the ground in, in vehicles. The first thing that happens is a plane is sent up into the sky, and it uh, searches for a small elephant herd. We were particularly interested in female elephants or cows, because they move around in family groups, and they would represent the different family groups in the park. The drug that's used to put an elephant to sleep is called M99 or Immobilon. It is extremely dangerous to people. One drop on your skin can end up killing you. Therefore the vets usually load up and prepare all the darts before they get into the helicopter. They do this by putting the liquid into the plastic dart. It's then compressed so that uh, when it hits the animal it will squirt into the animal very quickly. Uh, the dart is then loaded into the barrel of the gun and then uh, the vet gets into the helicopter, takes off and uh, joins the, the group that have already identified the herd. They'll then follow the elephant herd around till they get to a relatively open spot and the vet will shoot the elephant from the helicopter. Once the elephant is down and the drug has uh, put it to sleep, the rest of the elephant herd will gather around the, that individual to protect it. And so therefore you need to bring the helicopter or the ground crew in to, to chase them away. Using the helicopter is the most effective way to do that because uh, it's uh, less risky to people. The vet gets out of the helicopter as well to look after the health of the animal while the team quickly puts on the radio collar. But once the collar is on, it needs bolting on. It has a weight, the counterweight, that holds the, the collar down. 
The collar is made up of a transmitter which sits on the top of the neck of the animal, which transmits up to satellites and tells uh, you exactly where the animal is every uh, four hours. And that is uh, being transmitted up to satellites that are moving around the Earth. The bottom of the collar has a counterweight to make sure that that transmitter is always on the neck of the animal. And it's important when you're fitting the collar that that weight is fitted properly and is bolted on. And that's what takes the time when collaring the individuals. So the, the bolts are put on, they have to be cut off quickly and at the same time the vet is monitoring the animal. She'll be putting a small stick in the end of the trunk, making sure that the animal can breathe, taking its temperature and monitoring its breathing so that uh, the animal is, is definitely safe. At any point if, the, if it was too risky for the animal uh, we would resuscitate it and there's a reversal drug to the, the drug that's used to put it to sleep and it can be up within about uh, two to three minutes of that reversal drug. So that reversal drug is administered once the animal has been collared successfully and everyone has moved out of the area. And then, because they can communicate by infrasound, the individual usually rejoins its herd very quickly. What we're doing now that we've collared the elephants is to monitor them each day. As I said, you can see on the GIS system that we have how the animal is moving. This information is going to be used to inform future seismic work in Uganda and we want to be able to better plan and manage the seismic activities to ensure that the risks for elephants and the impacts on elephants are minimized. Thank you.